running because my tablet is not running well. So, oh, thank you. So, welcome to the second fundamental theorem uh, of calculus for vector fields. They say that the grass is greener on the other side, but I will say that the grass is greens theory on the other side, because today we talk, it's not my idea, but I like it. <laughs> That's a nice English kind of thing. And then, if you don't like English jokes, I send you this. I gave you the link. And guess what it is, what it is. Yeah. Teorema Greena. Teorema Greena, Krivelnina Integrale. That's the same thing. Same thing, we're gonna, we're gonna learn this today. Formulirovka. So, of course, theorems are all very standard and you, will, you can enjoy reading it if you want. Motivation, this only works in two dimension. Somehow we don't go to upper dimensions in this class, which is kind of the most important part of this class. Stock theorem, and we never go there. There's no time for that. That's very upsetting. That's why we're pushing our coordinator to change that slowly. But here's the idea. We just discussed, I just told you right now, this. That you first see a vector field, which are derivatives of some kind of original function. So it would be nice to integrate that and that's where there's an integral there. But what if I put integral sign on both sides? Then it gives you this kind of weird idea that integral of the vector field is double integral of the derivative of the vector field. You just add one more integration. This is kind of a mnemonic thing to understand it. But the theorem looks like this. You have vector field. What if you're gonna integrate that vector field? But we do have formula. This formula we learned last time. This formula works for closed curves. DQ, remember what Q uh, is. Q is the second component, while P is the first component. But now it's the other way around. The second component is differentiated with respect to X. The first component differentiated with respect to Y. And there's a negative sign inside. And then there's a D below all of this. So we will have to figure out what D is. D is over here. This is a bit hard to memorize, but I will tell you this is a way to memorize it. For me, it was hard to memorize, to be honest. Instead of calculating, the idea is, instead of calculating hard line integral on the left, what if this one is hard? Uh, maybe it's easier to integrate double integral, <laughs> which is kind of debatable. But sometimes it's easier to integrate and easier but double integral on the right. This is the idea. So if you don't want to deal with line integrals, there, this formula allows you to convert it into double integral. Hmm. This is the idea how to memorize this formula inside of the integrals. Uh, d, dx, and then p is at the bottom. d, dy, partial derivatives. q is at the bottom. When you cross multiply, multiply, it becomes derivative of q with respect to x minus derivative of p with respect to y. So everything here is flipped, if you notice. p goes, supposed to be the first, but it goes the second with the minus, differentiated with respect to the second variable. q is the second, but goes first and differentiated with the first variable. So that's why it's a bit confusing to memorize. The idea is pretty fascinating. This is a very known thing, very amazing known thing. So D in this formula is this domain inside of the curve. We actually never did this before. We do integrate line integral on top of this fence, right? So there's a fence going on. We're finding the fence. But what happens inside if C is closed and C is supposed to be closed for this uh, theorem to work? C is closed. It means it's kind of make some kind of area enclosed by c so instead of doing line integral which is a fence we are going to find the area of this d and put the equal sign between those two very unusual idea let me show you the example and hopefully it will be better calculate the given integral with the given uh What is a <laughs> vector field? <laughs> what kind of word I'm forgetting? Vector field, and then the triangle. So that is going to be an interesting example here. And let's do that one. So we keep giving you the same example again and again, but several ways to calculate it. Line integrals, line integrals. And then the triangle, and we're going counterclockwise with a triangle. Again, I've told you recently, we don't even need a picture anymore. 
But uh, now we're back to the idea that we do need a picture. I'll show you why. This is the area. This is a triangle they're talking about. So now C is not some kind of curve. It is a curve, but it's walking on a triangle. Maybe it's like a campus, uh, part of the campus. You're walking in a triangle between three buildings. You're walking counterclockwise. D is enclosed area by this C. This will be a pain to do line integral directly. Not only F will be complicated, you also need to split into three line integrals. Because if you remember, we need to describe this as a function, this is a function, this is a function. And then we're going to do three different line integrals for each line. That is too complicated. And this is the motivation not to use line integrals here, but to convert it into double integral. Did you want me to scroll up? Yeah. Nice. I guessed. Triangle. This is not angle, it's just triangle. So it, this is a nice motivation when we don't want to do line integrals, so too many pieces. So it will be easier, hopefully, to do double integral of this area instead. And that takes us to the exam two. Double integrals was long time ago. Maybe even exam one. Because we did triple integrals for like months and already, so double integrals were before that. So let's review that. Here's your picture. Here's the idea. We're deciding to not to do line integral. Line integral for the integral. For closed C, for closed C and into D can be converted into double integral. Double integral. And that's the decision we're making right now because it's too complicated to do that line integral. So over C, F, DR, again, we're still talking about vector fields. So there's still a wind blowing all over the place of this triangle and you're walking on C. But the formula tells us we can actually convert it into D. Now let's try to remember the formula. This is the hardest part of the topic, but everything else is not too bad. DQ, the second component with respect to the first, minus the first component with respect to the second. Oh, wow, I remember. Okay, if I remember it, you can remember. My memory is not good. No, but my memory is not good. <laughs> I prefer deriving things than memorizing. That's why I'm not doing physics major. <laughs> so, second over the first minus first over the second dx dy. Equals. Let's figure this out. Do we have the components ready? Let's go back and sign it with a pencil. My pencil is ready. It says, this is my P. This is my Q. If you have troubles to memorize which one goes first, it's alphabetic, right? P goes first in the alphabet and Q next one. Surprisingly, it's international notation for polynomials and stuff, P and Q. Everyone using it and all over the place. We also do that. That's what I just showed you in Wikipedia. They also do P and Q in Russian. Not like SH and CH and R. So, double integral over D. We don't know what D is. But derivative of Q with respect to X will be that second component. So I will write down for you once. The second component was X, Y with respect to X. And the first component was X to the 4 with respect to Y. Let me go check. DX, DY. Let's check. Yeah, second component is X, Y. The first one is X to the 4. Second goes first with respect to X. So you flip the order and a negative sign in between. Like so. Those are partial derivatives. Remember you used to struggle with partial derivatives? Now they come to be very simple thing inside of the no, triple no, integrals. You say that like I still struggle with it. Oh, I was hoping nobody going to say that. <laughs> Derivative X, Y with respect to X is just Y. Minus, because you imagine an x is a variable, y is a constant. Derivative of x to the 4 with respect to y is 0. zero. That's a good news. So at least the integral became super simple. We don't have to do four different, three different integrals. We just do double integral of y dx dy. That is much easier than what we could do with line integrals. So this is a good motivation to do that. However, um, we need to figure out D and that takes us back to the beginning of the class but after vector fields you will do top minus the bottom or right minus left on the triangle 
So let's decide. So go back to the, let's do step two. Step one was making this decision. How are we gonna calculate it? Step two, we decided to do double integral. So now the picture is important. I'm recreating the triangle with zero, one on the X axis. And then there's a point zero, one on the Y axis. And, good. Oh, such a perfect triangle. So what we're going to do now, we have to describe what D is. D is this area. We did this before on the test, find the area enclosed by. I'll search for those topics. Yes? Uh, I think I know the, the D. Or I, I, I have a guess. It's Tell me. Uh, is the Y component is 0 to 1? Let me do that. Y goes, let me check. Guy, let's do Y. Well, actually, which choice are you making? Top, bottom, and left and right? That depends on that. Uh, I'm doing left, right. So Y goes outside, you think, from 0 to 1. And then 0 to negative X. Zero, negative x, like so. And then obviously y is in the center. Y, well, yeah, y is in the center. Y is given. We we'll figure it yeah, out, yeah. like so. No, well, maybe. Let me check. Anyone agree? Disagree? I would do in terms of x too, but both will work. Top and the bottom both will work. So just choose whatever you prefer. Either you do top function here minus the bottom function, then everything will be y equals y equals, or you do right and left, this function on the right and this one is on the left, which is x equals zero and then whatever that is. Both are doable. So let's do the way I see in my notes, then I don't have to struggle. That's just a convenient way. I will leave it for you to check at home, right? I will choose this idea. So y will be between functions. That's my choice. If y is between function, it's top minus the bottom. Usual students just get used to it really well. And I like that I don't have to rewrite things. So the only thing I need to do is, I definitely know that this is y equals zero. That's already easy, so it's from zero. This one, I need to create it from two points, which are these two points. y equals one minus x. But we need this function anyways. For any choice, you have to figure out this function. So this is a line through two points. You can figure this out yourself. So if I do this as top minus the bottom, top minus the bottom thing, then this is my y. Then x can be just from a point to a point. x, as you can see, is from 0 to 1. Double integral becomes, if x is from point to point, it will be outside from 0 to 1 y is from a function to a function inside from 0 to 1 minus x and there was a function originally there which is called y agree so this one i also agree on this one this way if y is from 0 to 1 which is correct x will be x will be 1 minus y from 0 to x will be from 0 to 1 minus y this way is also correct as you can see, right? X is from zero and X one minus Y, right minus left. And then Y is from zero one. That is also correct. This one is right minus left, right minus left. Now this integration is a piece of cake. You just integrate Y with respect to Y. That's the inside integral. That will be Y squared over two plug one minus x and zero, and then integrate with respect to x from zero to one. Finish that and you will get one over six. We did that before, so I kind of don't want to stop here. One over six, that is easier than to build all three different lines and describe them. And then, and so on and so on. So that was a choice to jump from one topic to another topic, which is very interesting because we don't do double integrals with vector fields, but this genius idea, where that's why it's called fundamental theorem of calculus, too, says that there is a connection or particular equal sign between line integral, which is a vector field, and collecting all those errors on the way when you're running, and double integrals, which gives you area. But it works because we are running around this uh, triangle stadium, for example. 
So while I'm running, the wind is all over the place. While I'm running and collecting wind, and instead of collecting wind using line integrals, we decided to do the area D instead, and moving this to the double integral using partial derivatives in the formula like so. It is like so. It is a genius idea. It has deep understanding behind it, which I will try to explain you right now fast before the quiz. What do you think about calculations? Calculations not too bad. It just takes double integral, so you have to review that. But you have to review it before the exam anyways, final exam. So that's a good review after all. Yes. So what is Green's theorem calculated? Like yeah, very good question. I will show you this. Uh, motivation is very fascinating, actually. So I will show you motivation, and then maybe we'll do one more example. We'll see. Motivation is... This is the idea. If derivative of the, you don't have to write this down, I guess. I'll just give you a good note. If you have a first component of the vector field differentiated with respect to the second variable y and vice versa, and they matched kind of the idea of x, y derivative matched with y, x, kind of the same thing, and there's no holes in this shape, then for all closed curves, we have this green theorem saying that there's a connection between vector field line integral and double integral. F is conservative. We already figured this out from before. So F is conservative when and only when or if and on. Wow. <laughs> I know why it's glitching. Yeah. F is conservative if and only if this happens. And this, actually, write this down. This is a good one to know. F is conservative even and only if P with respect to Y equals Q with respect to X. We did have this before. That's a good review. It goes to this topic again. Intuition behind this, we mentioned last time, we, I mentioned last time uh, on Wednesday, that conservative fields actually talking about how rotational the field is. Does it have this sinking behavior or not? Does it go in circles forever or goes and unfolds like a hurricane? This is what helps us to plot and predict um, tornadoes. That's kind of a big deal here. So here is a rotational behavior. That's the idea. There is some kind of idea of big rotations and small rotation. Line integral measures the circulation of F around C. So when you are running the stadium on C, F is the wind, or maybe a water flow, whatever you want, a wind, which either helps you when you're running and it's, uh, and it's blowing into your back, Hello. Yeah. or blows into your face, depends how it goes. So if it's large, the rotation is large, so it makes sense. The bigger it helps you, the more it rotates and so on. If it's small, then no effect of the wind is happening on you. You're just running. But imagine the tornado was catching you while you was running on the track. Now you're like really spinning. You spin around like a ballerina. <laughs> right? Um, so <laughs> Carlos likes the song. Uh, so this means that this line integral, line integral measures what we can call macroscopic rotation, big rotations. Now, if I take these partial derivatives, they will instead measure the rotation of F around the point, not the whole track, not the whole track anymore. So that we can call microscopic rotations, microscopic rotations around the point. So yes, there's a huge rotation going on around C, but what about this particular location? Is it rotating? What about this one? Is it rotating and it's bigger or smaller? That is pretty cool research to do, especially if you want to predict some water flows and stuff. So this is a very cool idea here. It kind of makes sense. Think of the microscopic rotations as the mini whirlpools or hurricanes in a best hub called C. Green theorem says that if you add up all those whirlpools inside the best hub, you'll get a gigantic whirlpool or circulation around C. The more they are, and the bigger they are, small of them, around each point, the more you can predict that this one will be strong. That is make, That does make sense. So line integrals play a huge role in magnetic forces, wind research, water research, physics and chemistry in general. It's really fascinating. Biology, as you can see. So that is. let me finish just a second. Uh, that is a very cool idea. And this idea makes sense because I'm 
taking this integral, one integral of the whole vector field. That is a macroscopic rotation. Macro means big, if you don't remember, right? While micro means small. This integral means double integral, but integral of the integral means collect, like so, collecting small whirlpools, because integral is collecting things. If you don't remember this idea, integration is collecting those rectangles, but in general, it's collecting all the changes on the way. That's why integration of the vector field means collecting all the arrows on the way. Integral accumulates the changes in one big change. But integrating small chain changes, those are small changes, right? Small changes. And then collecting them twice, this way and that way, gives you a huge prediction of the big whirlpool from small whirlpools. So that is a pretty cool picture. I like it a lot. And then uh, this idea is here. When they give you, so three different cases, the rotation happens when it's not zero, negative or positive. There's a rotation around the point, uh, counterclockwise or clockwise. But if not, then it just, there's no rotation at all. So integral, line integral will tell you with a sign and how large the number is how bad the situation is. Will this tornado take your house away or just a palm tree, right? So like the size of the line integral will tell you how much arrows on the way it collected. And if there are lots of arrows, you better run. Look at that kind of the idea. So that's a kind of childish way to explain it, but I really like this idea uh, that he mentions in his notes, micro whirlpools create a big whirlpool in the bathtub or hurricanes. That does make sense. What was your question? Yeah, exactly. If there's a hole, if you ever take topology class, you will find out if, there, if there's a hole, everything screw up. <laughs> Somehow even one small hole screws up the whole mathematics, and if mathematics screw up, we all screw up. So uh, should be no holes. Apparently holes can stop the rotation. Uh, when the rotation hits the hole, it changes the behavior. So holes changes the behavior in general. We're going to do one more example on Monday, but you do have homework due Monday. This topic is not very hard, and to help you to prepare for the test, I can do whatever you want me to do, give you extra credits for like 80% of the homework, I don't know, anything. But your job is to do this homework, which is due Monday, because this topic is the last topic to go to the exam, and I think it's going to be a free response question. So this is the last one for the exam, 3, 13 point. Yeah. Yes. So